At this time, I'd like to introduce a group that's going to uh, speak to you about relationships and how important they are to children in the foster care system. The sweet smell of mom's cooking and the thought of going home to play with your brothers and sisters. Good times, huh? Well, we, are, we as foster children are much less likely to experience these all too familiar memories. The impact of relationships in your daily life affect you more than you realize. They define who you are and who you can be. Though positive relationships such as mentors, siblings, and community support such as doctors, teachers, and the likes, children in care can greatly increase their chances of success and stability throughout their lives. This is the impact of relationships. Right. Samantha, age eight, and her brother, age six, entered foster care for the first time. They spent their several years in foster care, bouncing from home to home. They always were placed together. They had the security from always having each other, or so they thought. Their current foster family was kind and always tried to include them in activities, but they were so re reluctant to do so. This was because they um, had been through so many foster homes and they distanced themselves and didn't want to get too attached to another family, only to move again. They learned to depend on only each other and no one else. A year after living with their current family, Samantha and Andrew found out they once again would move to another home. Although they were sad, they were excited to move to a countryside where there would be other kids, but most importantly, they'd be together. On the day of, that, of the move, Samantha was at school, not sad about leaving her classmates because their faces often changed and she had a hard time making friendships. She ran home, excited and ready for the move. She walked through the front door and saw Andrew sitting on the couch with the newest social worker, Beth. Samantha could tell something was wrong right away. It looked like Andrew had been crying and Beth had asked her to come and sit down and she had a couple things to tell her. It looked like Andrew was not gonna be moving with her to this new home. The social worker explained, social worker explained that there was problems um, with the family and they couldn't handle taking both of them in and that, that happens very often. Um, so Samantha was torn. Um, so, but Beth explained that they had to leave within the hour. So um, Samantha went upstairs, packed her bags. Andrew helped her load them up into the, ca the car. And as she was driving away, she saw Andrew in the window and she was looking and just hoping and praying that that wasn't the last time that she was ever gonna live with her brother. After Samantha left, Andrew had a down spiral. He started having behavioral issues in school, was diagnosed with ADHD and reactive attachment disorder. He was kicked out of that family because he started having behavior issues with the other kids in the family. So that until he emancipated at age 18, he was shipped from group home to group home. Samantha's story was considered a success. She stayed in the same foster family for four years and graduated high school. And she went on to college but only had sporadic visitations from the older foster family. So on the day of her graduation, it had taken her six years to graduate because of financial issues. So on the day of her graduation, she's looking at all of her friends, smiling and taking pictures with their families. And she was kind of thinking that she missed out on something. And she thought back to that day, the last time she had ever lived with her brother, and she thought maybe life could have turned out differently. There's a lot to be said about the importance of long-lasting relationships. Most people take them for granted. They don't think about how, how life would be different if they never saw their parents again, or if they were separated from their siblings. Instead, they rely on the fact that their family will always be there. Foster youth lack this privilege. Research shows that foster youth, when separated from their family of origin, tend to have an increased risk of emotional disturbances and problems in school and relationships due to the high anxiety and pain from the trauma. Um, when you sat down, you were giving a lilac or blue card. Can you please pull that card out? Um, in the bottom right corner, your card if, of your letter or your card, it will have a letter A. Can you please stand up? As of right now, you have officially been separated from your brothers and sisters. You are like the 75% of foster youth who never get to see their siblings again. 
You have no say in the matter, and this, you may never see your siblings after this moment. You can sit down now. In an effort to increase the number of sibling pla siblings placed together in foster homes, we recommend that policymakers require states to measure and report permanency and sibling placement outcomes. Youth in care face several barriers, one of which is inadequate transitional planning um, that makes it more, they, them more susceptible to negative outcomes such as lower educational attainment, higher risks of homelessness, unemployment, and substance use, uh, physical, poor physical and mental health, as well as greater risk of incarceration and criminal involvement. While legislation has begun to address the problem, the efforts to prepare youth for emancipation is lacking. As it stands now, transitional planning, which includes providing youth the opportunity to build lasting relationships with adults through mentoring begins no longer or no earlier than 90 days before emancipation. Yet foster youth who have be, been involved in communities and mentoring programs report that it takes two years to build a lasting relationship um, that reflects knowledge of intimate history. This is why we urge Congress to require states to begin transitional planning at the age of 15. As we talk about relationships, and the importance of positive relationships in the community, it should be noted that unlike their non-foster youth counterparts, foster youth don't get to participate in extracurricular activities uh, because of licensing standards and financial burdens. It seems only obvious that a state, if, play, if they place a child into a home, that they trust the parent to make the sound judgment about what activities their child can participate in, but this is not the case. Currently, um, to meet or comply with stand federal standards of so safety and well-being, states have um, created standards that require any adult who comes into regular contact with a child to get background checks, criminal background checks, which means that a kid who wants to do a summer camp or stay the night at their best friend's house or to be in a summer camp has to first have the, the adult approved for um, this kind of activity. The federal government needs to authorize states to follow or allow foster parents to enable their kids to participate in extracurricular enrichment and social activities so that they can live normal lives. Before we get into our next group, I want to ask um, anybody who's outside to please file on in. We'll make room for you. There's some chairs up here if you guys want to sit around tables. Come on in, don't be shy. <laughs> 